whose job is it to decide what our children learn in school? She comes home and says, why do I have two mummies? Why do I have two daddies? How are you going to explain that? In parts of the country, primary school children are learning that some families have same-sex parents. There's lots of different families in the school and we represent them in our lessons. From next year, the government wants all primary schools to do the same. Although many religious leaders have endorsed it, some communities aren't prepared to go along. There's no way people of faith will teach that it's okay to be gay, because the Bible tells us it isn't okay to be gay. For the last few months, I've reported on protests outside two primary schools in Birmingham. And now I'm going to meet other people of faith who feel the state is stamping on their freedom to practice what they believe. If I start to teach sex education, parents will withdraw their children. This is Queensbridge Primary School in East London. Our mother's house was always alive with music. Sometimes our mothers would put on old rock and roll records and all of us would dance to them. These nine and ten year olds are discussing different types of families. Love, happiness, children. Then they put like a grandma and a granddad. Lesbian, gay families. Yeah. They're very important too. At the moment, it's up to schools to decide exactly how they teach children about sex and relationships. Here, that means learning some families have lesbian and gay parents. What we're doing is empowering children to understand that when they grow up, they're going to need to be around a diverse range of people. There's lots of different families in this school. We've got children who have uh, same-sex parents, and we represent them in our lessons. But from September 2020, as part of new compulsory relationships education, the government wants all primary schools in England to teach about same-sex couples. What does homophobia look like to you? They're like saying he's stupid and stuff because he's gay. They're scared of gay people. That means they're homophobic. Many mainstream religious leaders have given their stamp of approval to education like this. But that doesn't mean that it's popular with all parents. Andrew Moffat is the assistant head teacher at Parkfield Community School in Birmingham. Most of the children here come from Muslim families. He introduced a teaching program called No Outsiders. It uses storybooks to reflect differences in society, including race, religion, and same-sex families. I was definitely an outsider. As a young um, gay child growing up in the 80s, it was a very scary time, and there was a lot of bullying. It would have really helped me to have uh, books that told me it was OK to be different. I wanted to find a way for primary schools to teach about equality, but in a way that no one was left out. As a teacher, I've always loved using picture books. You can hang a lesson on a picture book. You're talking about the characters in the book rather than our own experience. On the face of it, some might question why the materials being used are controversial. Elmer is one of the books. It's about a multicolored elephant who looks different from all the other elephants. In others, it's perhaps more obvious. There's this one, my princess boy, about a boy who likes to wear girls' clothes. And there's this one here, king and king, and this one is about two princes who fall in love. No Outsiders, or versions of it, is being used by schools across the country. We've had four years of, of not a whisper of complaint. It's gone extremely well. In fact, we've had parents involved in No Outsiders lessons for four years where they've come in and joined in. It's, it's been fantastic. But then in February, after several parents... ..complained, protests began at Parkfield School, 
sometimes including children. You want education, not indoctrination. The program designed to encourage tolerance instead brought conflict. We are entitled to our moral values, which we have held here in this community for decades. Parents complained that including same-sex relationships as part of equality education went against their beliefs. But there were also rumours that the school was teaching children about gay sex. The book we use in reception that touches on LGBT is Mummy, Mummy and Me. It's just about another family, two mums and their child. We teach children you can be who you want to be and you can be yourself. In February, the government laid out new guidance for relationships and sex education. From 2020, primary schools will have to teach children about relationships. That can include same-sex couples. It says all teaching of the new curriculum must be sensitive and age-appropriate, with respect to the backgrounds and beliefs of pupils and parents. The guidance was changed because the world has changed. We want children to grow up understanding that some people are different, some relationships are different from what they may have experienced, but all are valuable. We trust uh, individual schools, individual head teachers to know their cohorts of children and to determine how and when to address what can be, obviously, uh, sensitive subjects. But despite the government's support for equality teaching, we've learned that Parkfield, the school at the heart of the protests, felt it was getting a very different message. We've seen several emails and letters between the school and the Department for Education. They made clear that Parkfield felt it was put under immense pressure by officials at the department to suspend its No Outsiders programme, even though the trust, which runs the school, didn't want to. This letter from the school says, the DfE would like us to stop our teaching of equality to make this issue disappear. One minute you're saying equality is non-negotiable and the next your officials are telling the school to suspend its equality programme. Is that not sending mixed messages? Uh, well, I'm not aware of any such suggestion. I don't think any child should have to walk past a protest to go to school. I don't think any teacher should have to walk past a protest to go to school. People should not be protesting outside schools. And I'm pleased that in the case of the school you mentioned, that did stop. The Department for Education have since told us that pressure wasn't put on Parkfield to stop teaching about equality. It says any suggestion the dispute should be kept out of the media was simply intended to bring an end to the protests and encourage consultation. The No Outsiders programme is yet to be reinstated. There's no doubt in my mind that uh once Parkfield had suspended its No Outsiders uh, equality programme, it gave an impression to people that actually if they turned up outside of a school uh, with loud ailers and, uh, uh, and protest, uh, that other schools would back down too. And I think that was, was a fatal mistake. A few miles away at Anderton Park Primary School, they also use books about same-sex parents as part of their equality programme. She comes home and says, why do I have two mummies, why do I have two daddies? How are you going to explain that? Small children like that, they're brainwashing them, confusing them. Sarah Hewitt Clarkson is the head teacher. This is what we have to deal with every day. This is a year one classroom, reception children are over there. What do you do if this continues? Well, that's a very good question. I'm not sure. We're just a regular, normal, lovely primary school. And then for the last 20 minutes of the day, it's like living in a parallel universe. We have people outside our school screaming. We have to make sure children are prepared for a life in modern Britain. And all families are different. Some have one mummy, two daddies. So your parents, your family might, might not think it's OK. And we respect that religious belief, but in British law, it is okay. 
And that's an important thing for children in British schools to know. The school and the government is asking us to change our whole principles of our religion. Yes, it is legal to be gay, but do not push that analogy onto our children. The protests here have provided a platform for campaigners who want to reach a wider audience. See you there, Friday, 2.30, uh, at the protest. Shaquille Afsar is one of the lead protesters. He's not a parent here, but his sister's children go to the school. So where do you go from here? Do you keep doing this day in, day when, out? Do you really think that the parents who are sending their most prized possession into the school are going to budge? In May, the local council here issued him with a community protection warning, telling him his behaviour was having a detrimental effect on the school and local community and that he should stop. But he didn't. Being gay and legal is okay. That doesn't mean we have to morally accept it. Are you homophobic? I'm not homophobic at all. We have nothing against the LGBT community. You believe what you want, but I shouldn't have to agree with the way they're living. The protesters feel their views are being ignored. Our faith doesn't agree with this. So at home, we're not promoting this, are we? I'm a Muslim. According to our religion, it's forbidden. The gay is forbidden. Concerns like these are being raised elsewhere in the country. We're seeing uh, cases being referred almost on a, on a weekly basis now. Over 70 schools uh, where these issues uh, have, have been raised directly, letters being sent to school leaders asking the school to stop, uh, you know, teaching uh, relationships education, threats of withdrawal of children through to organised rallies and events. Schools around the country have been affected. In Ealing in West London, letters threatening to withdraw children were delivered to 11 schools. In Redbridge, parents at one school threatened to withdraw more than 100 pupils. And in Cheshire, threatening messages about a school's curriculum were left on its answer phone and Facebook page. These protesters are declaring war on LGBT kids. They're saying that these children should not get love and support and advice in their school. For Peter Tatchell, the row over what children are taught in school is all too familiar. In 1988, the government banned anything considered to be promoting homosexuality in the classroom. It was called Section 28. Children who need to be taught to respect traditional moral values are being taught that they have an inalienable right to be gay. All of those children are being cheated of a sound start in life. Yes, cheated. Mrs. Thatcher was responding in part to rumours that schools were using books featuring same-sex families. Word spread that children were being taught to be gay. The ban prompted a counter-campaign. Peter Tatchell was one of the leaders. He was concerned about the children caught in the middle. In those days, young LGBT kids felt ostracized, rejected. So the levels of depression and anxiety was very, very, very high. And many of them felt ashamed because that was the message they were getting in school. So he took his message to the school gates. The slogan was, it's OK to be gay. Uh, whether your friends are heterosexual, lesbian, gay, bisexual, it's OK. This leaflet wasn't promoting homosexuality, it was encouraging understanding and tolerance. In 2003, Section 28 was repealed. It really is so sad that these arguments are still mm. happening more than three decades later. Today, again, rumours are circulating that children are being taught to be gay. On social media and websites like this one, there have been claims that the RSC curriculum is part of a drive to socially engineer the values of children. And others say the No Outsiders programme involves the promotion of homosexuality. The words I was hearing over again was over-promoting of uh, homosexuality, brainwashing children. I am teaching children about equality, and yes, that includes being lesbian and gay, it also includes having different faith, disability, gender. 
Sara Khan leads the government's commission for countering extremism. She's concerned the protests and the changes to relationships and sex education are fueling the problem. And I would describe that as a mob. Um, it, it's a mob who are chanting and shouting and engaging in intimidatory and threatening behaviour. Um, and I think we have to recognise that and call it out for what it is. I consider what we're seeing in, in Birmingham to be extremism. It's whipping up tension, it's whipping up fear, it's whipping up hysteria. Are you worried about how things might escalate? Yes, I am, and I, I'm worried that how, when RSE comes um, formally into the curriculum in, in 2020, that this will escalate even further. It is very much being driven uh, by Muslim groups, but there's no doubt that there are uh, Christian groups and Jewish groups who are also concerned. It's predominantly anyone who comes from a very conservative faith background. In Scotland, the government also wants schools to teach about same-sex families. I'm on my way to meet one campaigner who is closely following events in Birmingham. To be a person of faith, it's like being in love. Peace without anxiety. Because Christ is God. Pauline Gallagher is a recently retired religious studies teacher. She started a group, Catholic Family Voice, hoping to provide an alternative perspective. The Catholic Church teaches that there is one context for sexual love, and it is uh, a man and a woman who are married. Anything outside of that disrupts that beauty. The actual agenda that underpins the ideology that's behind no outsiders, for example, is creating the primary classroom. Just so that I'm clear, Pauline, you're saying that these books are making children gay. If you go back and look at the programme, that's what they're designed to do. Pauline has her own take on the meaning in the books, and she thinks those protesting are right to be taking a stand. Now she's hoping to join forces with them. The Muslim community in, in Birmingham are total stars as far as we are concerned and they are um, they are trailblazers. We are encouraged by what we see. I would say we're excited. Have some soup. Tonight members of the group are gathering. Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. It's not possible to disagree with, 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 at the moment with LGBT. You will be called fascist, you will be called homophobe. The government is saying, we've got our understanding of sexuality and gender. That is the one true truth, and all kids will learn that, regardless of what parents want. We continue saying what we've always said, which is marriage is between a man and a woman, and now that is what is controversial. It's great to see that the Muslim community have spoken out about it. I'm pretty encouraged by that. Yeah, I think it gives us kind of a bit of hope. Pauline says people are coming together because they feel their religious freedoms are being sidelined. We've spoken to people from various faiths and they just simply do not accept LGBT being taught at a primary level. What do you say to those people? Well, I have to say my experience is different. We had a very extensive uh, consultation process. It's quite a monumental step forward actually, in terms of the uh, amount of new material reflecting the modern world. And it's been done in a way which has brought the vast, vast majority of people along with it. In Oldham, however, some parents are yet to be convinced. Nassim Ashraf is a Muslim. He claims he has a multi-faith network of five or 600 concerned parents. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, there. Teaching kids at five-year-olds, um, sexualization of them, it's, uh, it's too early. The whole point is, who is the primary educator of the children? Should they be learning these things at school from possibly a biased teaching material or from home from the parents? Back at home, Nassim tells me his group is asserting its religious rights without resorting to direct action. There are been no protests. There have been absolutely no angry parents going to see any teachers. We've not allowed that to happen. We're asking parents to approach the school, find out exactly what is being taught, 
and create steering groups with parents, governors, teachers to create a, a more inclusive policy. So are you saying that if the parent disagrees, the school should abide by that parent's request? Well, they, they should do, shouldn't they? In Manchester, faith leaders meet regularly to discuss community-wide issues and relationships education is high on their agenda. But for reasons going back millennia, sexuality touches that raw nerve. Many here support the planned changes. For me as a Catholic, you've got to love the individual, whatever may be your own prejudices. And change is coming. And we as faith leaders need to actually take every with us. David Lewis is an Orthodox rabbi. A strict reading of the Bible or Torah means that for people like him, same-sex relationships are problematic. The Torah contains not just our history, but also all of our laws. In Leviticus, it does describe forbidden relationships. You shall not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. It is an abomination. So when you read this, what does it mean to you and to your family? What do you say to your children? The Bible forbids me from many things. So my children will know the same way that the Bible tells them they can't eat pork, neither can one man marry another man. If I want to keep Judaism, I cannot be an active gay man. But the Bible forbids it for Jews. It doesn't give me the right to tell you what to do. The new guidance on sex and relationships education applies to all schools, secular and religious, state and private. Many of the most orthodox Jewish children go to Haredi, ultra-religious schools, run for and by the community. At a typical Haredi boys' school, there would be um, at least half, if not more, of the day spent on religious studies. It is a very central part of what these children would need to grow up and function in the Haredi community. What about LGBT teaching? Is that a part of your syllabus? The short answer is no. Haredi parents are very strongly opposed to any sexualization of their children whatsoever, to the extent that they wouldn't mention anything which could even lead to a discussion about sex. Simply put, Haredi children don't know how babies are made. For Haredi schools like this, the requirement to teach children about different relationships, including LGBT, poses a major challenge. If I was to decide tomorrow to teach about sexuality, sex education, if I start that tomorrow in my school, parents will withdraw their children. Are you concerned that religious groups will start withdrawing their children and perhaps homeschooling them? The law as it stands and can and should work for parents of various religious views. Most schools are getting this right now, every day. The law just means becoming aware at the moment that it's age appropriate, that families come in different shapes and sizes. It's very important to understand this is not about sex education for young children. Judith Nemeth runs the Values Foundation, set up last year to promote faith and traditional family values in education. Do you think these faith groups understand that this is, this is not about the mechanics of homosexuality? This is about storybooks. I feel it's very naive to say, sorry, to say this is just storybooks. It isn't just storybooks. They all give messages. So some parents would be, what on earth is this? I do not want my child to get this message. If you don't teach your children that it is okay to be gay, how do you teach them to be respectful of people who are different to them? There's no way that um, people of faith will teach that it's okay to be gay. They won't because the Bible tells us it isn't okay to be gay. But that doesn't mean that we are intolerant of people who do follow that lifestyle. Nobody's being judgmental here. Nobody's being homophobic. What do you think could happen? Do you think more protests could happen? Grassroots groups of parents are standing at the school gates, hanging out leaflets, saying, do you know what your child is being taught? Campaigner Susan Mason is doing just that. I prefer not to encourage the practice of homosexuality to children in primary school. She too is taking a message to the school gates. For her, it's about warning parents of the curriculum to come. The plan is to go to schools to uh, mobilise parents. It's not that we're 
targeting schools per se. It's just that we know that's where they'll be at three o'clock in the afternoon picking up their children. Hello, this is your new curriculum. New curriculum. To do with the new relationships and sex education that will be coming to the school. You might be fine in your school, but it's worth checking. I'm aiming to disrupt. I'm not wanting you know, riots and protests outside um, schools, but either the parents need to be satisfied or the school will need to change what it's doing. Back in Birmingham, the row outside the schools continue. And for those stuck in the middle, it has taken its toll. I still hear now the children chanting, get Mr Moffat out. It was the worst thing I've ever heard. And I'll never forget that sound. I've seen children change in attitude towards me. A few weeks ago, I did an assembly. I say to this year group, good morning, everybody, and hardly anyone answered. That's really heartbreaking for a teacher. So I think the DfE could have done so much more. I think they were too slow to respond and to be able to provide support to head teachers who are experiencing something that's really quite traumatic. When you're at the receiving end of that type of hostility and abuse, it is really very traumatic. So providing support to head teachers, but also clarifying what's actually being taught to, to pupils in, in school. The new curriculum becomes compulsory next year. The government says parents should be consulted, but won't have a veto. It's schools that will have the final word on what is taught and when. At the moment, heads have quite a lot of responsibility for taking the decisions about the size and shape of the curriculum. So I think it'd be very helpful if there was a bit more definition around, around what schools are expected to do so that individual heads don't come under this kind of pressure. And what happens if there is no consensus? Sometimes the two sides don't agree. It is the law in this country that two people of the same sex can get married. We are all obliged to, uh, to be considerate, to not discriminate against people because of their sexual orientation, along with uh, you know, other characteristics. And that isn't going to change. It's the reality of the society uh, we live in. Talks between the Parkfield parents and teachers have broken down after months of trying to come up with a compromise. The head teacher says a revised version of its equality programme will be taught from September. Large numbers of parents are now temporarily withdrawing children from school in protest. Pupils and teachers across England are packing up for the summer. For many, it will be a welcome respite. But when schools return, the protesters may too. I think we will see more and more uh, uh, campaigns and protests that we've seen at Parkfield, at Anderton Park and many other schools. Um, so we're calling again for that urgent uh, uh, review and clarification around the regs and, and politicians and faith leaders and everyone else uh, in the communities affected to work with schools to ensure again that we ensure that all of our children uh, you know, uh, receive an education that equips them for life in modern Britain. News Isaac doesn't want to hear his worlds falling apart in the penultimate episode.